After 18 months of restrictions, we're on our travels again. Ptarmigan over Irish and English setters in Swedish Lapland. Excited. In Scotland, we're crashing through the brush after a shot on a seeker. Is it dead or is it injured? Because I, I try to clean kill, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm good. <laughs> Find out later in the show, we have news we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. This is a film full of firsts. It's the first time for us filming in Swedish Lapland. We haven't filmed ptarmigan before. No, it's fun again. No. <coughs> yeah, very good. Too bad. <laughs> and Paul will be the first Brit to hunt these mountains above Kirana, a mining town famous for the Northern Lights and nearby Ice Hotel. Pioneering stuff. I don't like flying. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Ain't got no plane. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A helicopter night to the wilderness. I think it's either 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending where they want to go. So, uh, yeah. Yesterday, I dropped some sleeping bags off with, with some of the guys just in case they couldn't get the helicopter back out because of the weather. So, yeah. Could be very interesting. So yeah, really excited. We got, um, I think it's Irish Setters and Ptarmigan. So super excited, and uh, I think we're going to do some miles today. So it's going to be good. As the name suggests, our outfitter uses a helicopter all year round, be it for tourists or to ferry anglers to remote locations for what we're told is world-class fishing for salmon, trout, grayling and arctic char. Today it's for a special member of the grouse family. Fantastic. Come on then. Hey. First impression. It's just vast. Reindeer over there, <laughs> masses of lakes, and we're in the middle of nowhere. And there's a serious bite to the air. It's like uh, probably November at home. A bit of a nip to the air. So very, very excited. I think we're going to do some serious walking. So the step counter will be good today, David, for our fitness levels. <laughs> so uh, the plan is, Tondra, the plan is we're walking towards toward the wind. Yep down towards the lake over there. So we have like a wetland here, a little bit swampy area. So we're gonna first try to see if they're a little bit more in the wetlands. Then we go up on the drier, higher land. Yeah. So I have all kinds of type of terrain here. So yeah. it looks really good. So when my dog uh, points the dog out, she will stand extremely still. Yeah. I will walk through to, to up to her and I will put a leash on her. Right. Because she's a little bit, uh, she can run after. So just to keep it safe. So yep. I will walk up to the dog, put the leash, and then you will go in front of me and you will flush them out. Okay. And then you have open to shoot. To shoot, clear yeah, shoot. So never down in the bush, of course. Yep. So it's just uh, straight up in the air. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And my dog will be in the back. Perfect. So we start with that and we see how it goes. Yep, no Very problem, good. fantastic. Okay. Tundra, come. <laughs> Keep going. She's gone. Our guides today are Miko with his English setter, aptly called Tundra, and Frederick with his Irish setters, Hardy and Lily. Miko wants to develop the hunting side of Arctic heli, so is hosting us to show off what Swedish Lapland has to offer. So far, so good. So that's the direction, so let's go. Okay. Lincoln, is it? Yeah, Lincoln. You see a bit of action, as you can see. Non-ejector. Perfect. A state shotgun. A state shotgun. As we're without any type of weaponry. Weapon at all. <laughs> We've been stripped of all weapons in Sweden. <laughs> that's another story. We'll save that for later. Yes, yes, that's another story, definitely, David. And uh, 
it's quite a long story yes. too. <laughs> oh, that way. Okay, there you go. The conditions up here are completely different to where we were 20 minutes ago, and you have to be dressed for any occasion. Paul has his Shooter King layering system, so he'll be okay. Plus, the Peltors don't just protect the ears, but act as an important windbreak. Have you done walked up grass before? I've done walk, yeah. yeah it's, uh, this is like the, the, the early days of Paul Childerley on a grass moor in Wales. And um, the Labradors worked very similar to this, and literally the Labrador would point them. And uh, yeah, it was like hunt the, co hunt the covey of grass, so similar to today, so, but really rewarding. So, like, ah. Oh, and then they get a point or you get a, a flare of a, of, a, of a grouse, so you're like up again and down. But yeah, it's great. It's uh, really exciting and it's like drives you on all day because you're like just constantly hunting all day long. Reindeer antler, check that out. Oh, we go, we go. Quick, quick. Okay. Come up from the hill. Uh, yeah. And if birds fly up, you can take a shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you come from the hill. Honey! Ah! Oh. Honey, hat! If you can snore, bird or that. Honey, hat! They never knew, yeah. That was new one. New one's it? You get one. <laughs> I was supposed to be there, never there. <laughs> That's true, yeah. We were looking at 12 o'clock. Yeah, and they door. come out of here, but. <laughs> didn't say nothing. I'd wanted to shoot and then they crossed, but I didn't want to shoot two in one shot because I just feel that's a bit disrespectful. So I pulled, pulled it and then went again and then of course I didn't give it enough lead and flicked it a little bit. And the second shot I think it was just a follow up of hope. But uh, the chap say we might have it on this, it's, it's, it's pulled out from the pack and gone out by that stone on that right hand side. So it looked pretty, pretty uh, done. So if not, I think these dogs will pick it up and we'll either get a second shot at it or uh, we'll uh, find that they're dead. So, well, fingers crossed. Or well, dead? Yeah, there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Told you, David. Told you. Never in a doubt. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. yeah. Wow, look at that. First time again. Wow, we. Check that, his feet. This one, I think it's an old one. Oh. Yep. Yeah, this is a big one. Big, good condition. Yes, really and nice bird. This is the most beautiful time of the year when it's like this. And they're just, just molting into their white yes. colors. And this is going to get more and more white. Yeah. yeah. And they, what, on, the, on these ground, what do they feed on, the bilberries? No, they're eating this. The bilberry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This and the, like grass. Yeah. The... And they're good to eat? Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Yes. And, and you, you, you fill... It's a little bit like uh, liver in the taste. Yeah, yeah. And you fill it them off and fry them or? Yes, short. Short time? Yes. Perfect. With a little red wine or not? Yes, red wine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. things start coming together. There's clearly a good population of the grouse in this remote area. Next year is meant to be spectacular as, just like with the red grouse, there are population cycles. There's no cool, real yeah. management here apart from some red fox control. You've got a guy that does quite a lot of foxing for him and uh, it's, they basically sit out in an area. I think they do it more so when it's colder and more snow. They start, they go, use a caller, call them in. So it'd be quite exciting to see them, like, you know, fox tracking into. I know they do a lot in Norway and uh, 
Denmark they do a lot of that. So we saw one coming in the helicopter, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Big, big as well, big fox. Paul gets a second. This time, there's no Get doubt. In. Into the water. Oh, it's in the water. We must pick it up. Good condition. Yes. Very good condition. Very good condition. Yeah. Quite an interesting mix. Seeds. A bit of vegetation. Oh, look at this. Bit. Like a fruit. And lots of. Quite hard needles. Jeez. Very, very, very. It's incredible where they're getting nutrition from. Yeah. In he goes. Thank you. After you do it good, that you wait a little bit. Yeah, let him get him yeah, clear. And if you hit it too close, ah, damage. You, you damage the bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now there's no pressure on that because he got up and he was plenty yeah. close enough, and he crossed the road and I let him get above the. Yes. Good. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> looking for praise all the time. No, like, oh my he God, understands like... what class shooting's all about. <laughs> he just thought, you know, that appreciated the whole situation. Oh yeah, so he appreciates a great shot. Yeah, well no, no, what, basically, not just shooting to blow it up, you're shooting it to eat it as well. And let it get up, it was nice and close, got out, got clear, and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was pretty confident on that shot, not like the first two. The first two I was pushing myself a little bit. Um, so yeah, if they're all like that, I'd be very happy. <laughs> ah, Mr. Second. His next opportunity brings down one, possibly two. He's wondering if a slightly bigger shell would be a better option if we're invited back. Obviously we're shooting quite light cartridges. When they're out a bit of distance on the wing, they, they take a bit of this, to be fair. And uh, you see already, when they're out like a little bit of distance, they like with the wind they just whoosh, go on and pitch down. When they're 20 meters, they're okay, but when they're going out a bit. What would you, what would you use at home on grass, water grass? Personally, I, I wouldn't mind using a 20 bore, but I'd probably use probably 28 gram flies. Yeah. Personally, a little bit a bit heavier. Um, probably a little bit tighter chokes as well. It's quite open chokes, but it's doing the, the job. Benefit, oh, yeah. benefit of the, the 20 bore is. The weight, I suppose, isn't it? Hundred percent, especially if you've got a few cartridges in the backpack. Um, yeah, hundred percent. It's all about all about the weight, and you know, you see today, it's, it's doing the job. Um, but with this wind, it's carrying on a little bit more as well. So, but yeah, that's number four. Very happy. Yeah, it's a wonderful one. Yeah. Sure. The quota is eight one. birds per day, and Paul so has four. We have a yes. few hours and yes. a few Big kilometers well. to yeah, travel figure, yet, yeah. but not without some food and checking in with the helicopter pilot. What happens if the bad weather comes in? Then we get stuck. Stuck. Do you have a heater? Ah. The heater is where we left. Ah, oh, that's the gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heater and tent. But we also have shelter down there. Okay. <laughs> but we have no beers. Oh. oh. So then we right, need to I'm go walking. back. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Proper in the wilderness. What am I? So. I thought they were joking yesterday when they said that. The fire and the brake are welcome, and refuelled, we're off again. Got it. Couldn't get. I couldn't see it over top of this bit of brush. <laughs> Tiptoes. Oh, that's better. Better when you hear it first. Had to double up. Excited. And sometimes you go home with four. Sometimes you go home yeah, with eight. With nothing. Yeah, sometimes with yeah. one, sometimes or, or with eight. Or bad shooting. Oh, bad shooting, yeah. Sometimes with eight. Yeah. But as I told you, it's just important for me that everything works with the dog. 
when she's standing, she flush them out and she sit, then I shoot for her. Yeah. Uh, but only when she's doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Our last bird is a textbook set by Hardy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I called him just before. I did that out. Out. <laughs> Fantastic. With half Thank a dozen you. birds and 15 kilometres under our belts, it's a good time to call in the chopper. Thank you very much for today. It's, it's been uh, fantastic. Yep. Your first time hunting yeah. again. And the first time you've had English people definitely. hunting with you, yeah? Yeah. Definitely. yeah. And what are we like? Are we English okay? Are we have <laughs> never crossed this ground before. Ah. We're the first one. Fantastic. Sure. Are we pass the test? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> to contact Miko about hunting and fishing opportunities in Swedish Lapland, go to arctichelly.se. And if you are British, you could be the second of our countrymen to shoot ptarmigan in these wildlands. You can find Peltor Ear Protection on 3M's UK website. To learn more about what's on offer inside the Arctic Circle, go to heartoflapland.com. Thank you, Paul, David and everyone involved, especially Heart of Lapland, which invited us across because they understand the economic benefits of hunting tourism in a region. If only more tourist boards weren't terrified of the extremists. We'll have more exceptional hunting from there in the coming weeks. Now, from helicopter highs to the sore bottom, that is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. It's been a coordinated week of attacks in the media on hunting and shooting. SABS released hidden camera footage of Beaufort hunt staff putting down hounds. With nobody from the hunt or hunting organisations willing to comment, here's Charlie on ITV News explaining why hounds don't make good pets. The SABS timed their video release to coincide with a run up to a vote on trail hunting on National Trust land. Meanwhile, while agreeing that putting down any working animal is a hard choice to make, Vets questioned the SAB's central assertion that shooting is less stressful for the hound than putting them down by injection. In my view, putting a hound down with um, a fixed, uh, fixed uh, bolt or a free cartridge like we do with horses is quicker and better than injecting. Meanwhile, a burnt out vehicle close to Chris Packham's house prompted the BBC TV presenter to call on his supporters to vote to ban trail hunting too. It was one of at least two vehicles found burnt in the New Forest that night. Another was found a mile away next to a dead calf. Hampshire police are investigating both incidents. A former policeman says it is unlikely that one of the burning vehicles was a targeted attack on the BBC presenter. I mean, you'd have to ask yourself why you'd go to the trouble of stealing a car to go and do that, to set fire to the car, because if you got caught on the way, you're not even going to you're not even going to achieve your ultimate aim. You could just drive up to the gates and set fire to them and then drive off again. It would be a lot easier, probably quicker, and less likely to get caught. I just, uh, uh, obviously this is all speculation because we don't know the motivation of the people who've done this. The one thing that, that you do tend to realise if you're dealing with terrorist organisations and extremist groups is they want you to know they've done it. Attacks on the countryside in the media is turning into violence and vandalism on the ground. Saps turned one deer stalker's high seat into a potential death trap in Suffolk. A long way from a public footpath, they part cut through the ratchet strap and left this sign on it. Meanwhile, anti-badger cull protesters posted these pictures of smashed traps. As we reported last week, Cheshire Saps openly carry lumps of concrete at hunt meets. With pheasant shooting underway and the popular newcomers day at hunts taking place in the next week, 
the countryside is bracing for more attacks. The RSPB wants to stamp out Muirburn in Scotland within a year. It's brought out a report, how to prevent nature and carbon going up in smoke, licensing Muirburn. It calls on the Scottish Government to introduce licensing and to do so before the start of the next Muirburn season in October 2022. The report ignores science, which shows the benefits of Muirburn to rare birds and the importance of conserving rare heather moorland. A shooter's had a lucky escape after a goose landed on him. Joe Goff filmed the bird coming down on the unnamed gun at the Roughton shoot in Shropshire. Joe told us, we're always having a great time, but this topped it. The shooter was unharmed and the goose was eaten. The cost of policing an animal rights group outside a puppy farm for animal testing has hit £200,000, according to a Freedom of Information request. Camp Beagle in Cambridgeshire is 10 metres from the gates of MBR Acres, part of US multinational Marshall Bioresources, which breeds up to 2,000 beagles a year to sell for animal testing when they are four months old. In a statement, Cambridgeshire Police says that it continues to provide an impartial and proportionate response to the protests, balancing the right to protest with the right of staff at the site to go about their lawful work. Antis are using the planning system to try and close down a game dealer. Chanctonbury Game in West Sussex wants to move to a new site, but there's a campaign against it, led in part by locals, but also backed by Antis. Creative hunt sabs in Ireland are using Photoshop to help with their lobbying. A group superimposed the words, let's get coursing banned onto a picture of a National Association of Regional Game Councils Facebook post. They used the post to try and bump political party Sinn Féin into backing a ban on coursing. Sinn Féin spotted the ruse and declined. Tired of antis in government trying to reduce the duck season, Australian shooters have begun a media campaign to showcase the conservation work they do. Wetlands Environmental Task Force puts out videos and stories about how they help waterfowl and conserve nature, such as these duck nest boxes. Thanks to Glenn Faller for the story. An American woman is spending four days in jail after going too close to a bear. A judge sentenced Illinois woman, Samantha R. Dering, to jail time for not moving away while a grizzly bear with two cubs came dangerously close and bluff charged her in Yellowstone National Park. She was fined $2,000 and banned from the park for a year. Fly fishing is more than 13,000 years old. Researchers have found evidence that prehistoric inhabitants of the Hula Valley went fly fishing in the Jordan River and employed sophisticated tools. Scientific journal PLOS One reports how researchers from Tel High College in Galilee, the US, Italy and Germany found bone fish hooks, grooved stones and worked out that the early anglers used fur and feather, not bait, to catch fish. And finally, US rangers have removed a tyre from a deer. The tyre was stuck around the neck of a 600 pound elk in Denver, Colorado for nearly half its life. They tranquilized the four-year-old bull elk and cut off his antlers to remove the tyre. Full of leaves and pine needles, the tyre weighed 35 pounds, around 15 kilos. And they released the elk with a new spring in its step. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, last week we had fast forest action stalking a woodland seeker. This week, pro stalker John Dodd is back to do the same, this time with Healy, the boss of clothing company, Shooter King. If you want to see the forest come alive with animals, carry thermal. Look through the gap between those two trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Got I it. see it. It dies, yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah. This is what Stalker John and guest Lee are looking at. 
you can't see these deer without thermal. The hunters move up to a mossy hump where John starts calling. <coughs> Unfortunately, deer have their own inbuilt thermal spotters. Lee moves and the invisible seeker vanish. To call me. Once you know where the seeker are, and in the one in ten chance they don't know where you are first, you have to keep it that way. Minimal movement. If you use deer stalking as exercise, the fitness training you get stalking seeker in woodland is between calling points. And so it's on to the next. And the next. Plenty of sign of them. No actual animals. And so on. Boss the dog can smell them, we can't see them. And then we get to the calling point where it all comes together. The stag reacts and reveals itself. This is not stalking for the faint-hearted. You have a few seconds to get onto your animal and you have to be confident of your shot. And this is stalking where a dog is more essential than a thermal spotter. John makes the quick decision to let Boss go at once. Dog and deer crash off through the trees. With visibility only a few yards because of the tightly planted spruce, we set out on the detective work. It's a stressful time for the shooter, Lee. I, I didn't know whether I got the deer, so... Hope I, I got it, and the main question for the gamekeeper is that why they can find it, I couldn't. I couldn't hear them, I couldn't see them, so that is a very, very good challenge for me. So John has a kind of Spider-Man sense, I think he can tell when the deer is there. Yes, yes, he's a professional gamekeeper, yeah. And it's good he's got a dog, because you need one. Yeah, we need a dog, absolutely, yeah, yeah. He's a good company, and they seek track the deer as well, because the deer probably not clean shot and probably will find it yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah well we don't know until they find it but it's yeah. so how are you feeling exciting a bit of pressure because i i tried a clean kill but unfortunately I, did, I didn't know that so hopefully fingers crossed i'm good <laughs> yeah. lee finds blood where he shot the animal and just a hundred okay. yards away boss leads john to the stag itself <laughs> if it's going to run, I mean, even if it runs 20 metres. Oh, yeah, you need a dog. I mean, is, have, you had, have you had occasions where you just can't find it? You must have done. Yeah, everybody has that. Uh, yeah. That's just the way it goes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and as far as this is concerned, how long has it taken? I don't know, it must be half an hour, is it? Half an hour. Yeah. And we got... Sure dog. Boss the dog is exhausted, but soon recovers, and Lee has a big stag and an exciting hunt to look back on. Thank you very much. Yeah. You happy? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nervous, so I, I thought I'd probably I'd miss it. <laughs> if you would like to go stalking with John, there's a link in the description below. Thanks, John and Lee. Now, as part of a series of films we recorded in the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre in July, which we are putting out as mini podcasts. I talked to former head of the League Against Cruel Sports, Jim Barrington, and Shooting Times writer Richard Negus about whether the ban on hunting with hounds has really helped the fox. If the League and the RSPCA and I4 and others who campaigned for this law, which came in uh, in 2005, if they'd really thought that it had improved animal welfare, they would have done the research, they would have done some studies which shows that animal welfare, wild animal welfare, had indeed improved. And for all the money that's been spent on this law, and something approaching 30 million was spent trying to get it onto the statute book, God knows what has been spent since, including public money, all that would have been worth it in the mind of the public, because they would have said animal welfare has indeed improved. But the very fact they haven't done it speaks volumes. There's a link in the description below to take you to the full interview. And here's a plug for another podcast. I'm on the Blood Origins podcast this week, talking to Robbie Kruger, a South African who lives in the USA, about how we brand hunting. Now, from sentience and senselessness to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is hunting YouTube, which aims to say the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Gun dog photographer Nick Ridley kicks off his 2021-22 shooting season with a trip to a favourite shoot in Bedfordshire and brings along a young cocker in the hope he shoots a first bird over him. Thanks to Ben Green, who suggests this film by TGS for Viking Arms about stalker Kaylee Gray in Yorkshire. The Turkish continue their love affair with wild boar, even though the animal is officially haram. This is Waruku Team Doma's Avkilari on a driven hunt, bringing down a big animal. Showing the season well underway the Wild Serbia Channel is near Asanja on the Sava River outside Belgrade on a wild boar and predator hunt. Over the border in Croatia, Servile Channel is after trophy red deer during the rut. Plenty of roaring and like the Serbian film, no great need to know a Balkan language. In a similar vein, Woodwalker is in Hungary with friends during the last part of the rut. He calls it hunting fever from the first second. In Australia, Edge of the Outback is helping a farmer so desperate the man is sleeping with his lambing ewes. He has a 308 with Thermi and XP50 and puts a few on the deck. And finally, Smack 'em Outdoors is a gang of college boys from Minnesota and North Dakota here out after geese and ducks. Plus, they get a visit from an auntie who's a lot quieter and more respectful than the ones we get in the UK due to hunter harassment laws in the US. There's a good idea. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>